Okay, hey guys, this is your weekend reading for October, what's the day, October 3rd? October 4th to the 5th, 6th, 7th. I don't ever have the days right, but anyway, October 4th to whatever day Monday is, I believe that's the 7th. Um, yeah, so it's a lot going on this weekend. We got the new moon coming up tonight. Um, a lot of times the new moon has actually been in the morning, but the new moon, um, if you're on Eastern Standard Time, my time, it'll be at 5.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this evening. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, the new moon will actually be in Libra. Um, it's not void, of course. It'll actually be Libra. Uh, so, let's get right into it. Again, this week... The stone we had was Ingas, and Ingas is basically the stone of just common sense. Um, ironically, this stone is actually connected to the new moon as well, um, which, you know, where's, where's deep common sense will come from, you have to go into the dark recesses of your mind and go basically into your uh, intuition. This is also connected to cancer, which cancer also connects to your feelings and your deep intuition. So that's the stone for this. That's still the stone, which is going to be part of this weekend energy. So let's get into our indicator card, shall we? Um, oh, first, uh, yeah. First, I want to show the new deck that I got thanks to uh, Tony Walker. No, she did not buy it for me, but um, she ordered the deck. And, you know, I, re I realized I'm really attached to Shirley Harnish uh, decks. She has one more deck out that I want to get. And I love it because of the symbolism and the symbology and all that other stuff. So um, I pulled one of these cards for indicator indicator um for this week too uh the one thing i'm you know this is a quick deck review for this but the one thing i do love is that the back are blue so you know blue is the color of the throat chakra which speaks for your truth and now it's definitely time to speak your truth um as usual like most decks it has the little gold lining on the side i prefer the silver lining but whatever uh the other thing that i do like with this deck is that when i first shuffled it it wasn't hard to shuffle the cards didn't really stick together which means she used the um a still quality grade cardstock, but it's a lesser, it's a uh, it's a thinner grade, so it's not that hard to bend and uh, get the cards and stuff. Now the only thing that I can say that I do not like, which I knew, um, which I actually knew after I ordered the deck, so I already knew about it before it came, which is is it too much of a problem? Is the words down here? I don't like the words on the card. I really don't, and the reason why is because you'll go to the word first before you go to the picture, and let the picture go into symbology, and the symbology connects directly into your intuition and spiritual higher self. So because the words is there, it kind of, to me, it kind of conflicts where you see the word manifest, and it'll go directly to your logical side of what the definition of manifestation is, or maybe if you're like me, the etymology, and you'll skip the deeper meaning and the colors and the pictures, because all that plays a part. But that's easy fix. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, um, a more permanent marker and just black out the words. Surely will. Once I get used to the deck, I'm just black out the words. Call that a day and probably just put numbers on the side in case I forget what, the card, what they are. But anyway, other than that, I like this deck. It's pretty cool. So, let's get into the reading. Okay, now the first card that we have, of course, like I said, I'm still learning tarot or getting more adjusted to tarot, as I've been told. <laughs> Um, as I've been told, I don't, I, I don't really need to learn it. I just apparently need to get used to using it all the time. They, I don't believe that I know it, but other people do. So, anyway, this is the Three of Swords. Now, with the Three of Swords, uh, once again, I'm going to rely on the symbolism in the card and not necessarily the definitions. So, with just a symbol, symbolism, um, first of all, three. Three is the number of the Trinity. Um, the, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit the um maiden mother crone mother father child that's that's uh you know the symbolism of three is trinity so with the trinity that's always something that's um that's already started that's birthed that's um pretty much that's it that started that's birthed you have the mother father and then the child is already born so it's already something that's coming to creation but yet still young so that's that's just there already for me anyway uh now, it's also a number, you know, of, of, to me, it's still like a young spirit and spiritual spirit and everything like that. Now, the first thing I noticed in those cards was you have the two women representing the, uh, representing spirit and the physical, or the, uh, the, um, the dark side and the light, the sun, the sun, I'm sorry, that's over here in the moon, the logic and intuition. But if you notice, 
they're very still. There's no movement. And they're exactly the same. And they're literally holding their hands on the blade of the sword. Almost as if right before they're cutting themselves. Um, and then you have the man here who's holding another sword. And if you notice, the sword is more so leaning towards the direction of the logical self as opposed to the spirit self. And so is he in a way. And, but he's cutting his spirit or his own spiritual side and he's cutting his lung. If I can go, if you'll let me go in closer. It's cutting his lung. So with him cutting his lung, that he's tapping into his air source, his air supply, which is his higher self. You know, air represents higher thought. And you also have these birds back here. You also have all these glaciers and dark glaciers and all the water in this picture is frozen. And then you have all the... <coughs> Excuse me, then you have all the clouds in the sky with just a little bit of light barely breaking through, but his back is towards it. <clears throat> so that shows to me, with fro uh, the fact that there's a whole lot of frozen ice, is that there's a lot of um, emotions that that are frozen in time. Um, a, lot of, a lot of past emotions, or even new emotions, that are, it's not, it's not, the problem is not your spirit, the problem is not your logic, the problem is your memory. Is when I get look at this card. To me, the problem is your memory and you holding on and you have keeping these people that you need to let go frozen in a time and space that you know are no longer at, and it's causing you pain. And you know, with this new moon coming up in Libra, it's time to balance that pain instead of um, keep stabbing yourself like he is over and over again trying to stop his breath, trying to stop himself from feeling, trying to stop himself from thinking about it. It's time to come out and balance it. So with that, I'm going on to the next card, and the next card is from. The other Shirley deck, and this card is the card of uh, Revelation. And again, this weekend is going to be a lot of revelations, and you need to face them. We need to face these revelations. Uh, I really should switch this card. But anyway, I switched these two cards. But these, uh, it's, it's a lot of revelations, and you need to face them. You know, Libra, again, is the great balancer, but it's not a... Um, it's not it's not it's not just the inner balance because Libra is a very social sign. So it's the outer balance as well. So you need so now's the time to balance up. Have those revelations about people who you need to let go, people you need to keep around. Now's the time to make clear cut decisions. Libra is also the skills, it's about justice. And when you have justice from the spiritual realm, because we're going towards Samhain, and the closer we get to Samhain, the more the veil becomes thinner. And the more the veil becomes thinner, the more spirit is allowed to get through and show you what needs to go, what needs to stay, for it's for you to uh, reap this last part of the harvest season before we go deep into um, the rebirthing season, which is really what the winter is about, nurturing preparation for rebirth. So... With that being said, it's going to be a lot of revelations coming up, and you have to deal with them if you plan on sowing good seeds next year, if you plan on nurturing yourself throughout these winter months and preparing yourself for the birthing season in the spring, for the planting season in the spring. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So with that, with those revelations, like I said, you have to um, go on. It's going to be, uh, while some of it will be inner, everything deals with the inner reflects the outer. The main manifestation part is going to be the hour, because now the time you've been thinking about it long enough, you've been playing it over your head long enough, you've been going through the same emotion long enough, now it's time to go ahead and do that physical thing. If that person needs to be cut, it needs to be cut. If um, certain habits need to be changed, it's time to change them. If uh, whatever it is, if that thing, if it's certain stuff you're still keeping on, items you keep, you're keeping around, you need to go, you need to go in order to bring that balance. This card is a surfacy card, which is basically the same thing as Revelations. Things are surfacing now that you've been trying to hold down. Um, and it's surfacing to the point where you can't ignore no more. And it's meant to do that. So, and it's meant for you not to just think about it, not to deeply an analyze about it, but to actually do something about it. And with this new moon, it's the perfect time to do it. So let's go into the actual reading. Do, 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 do. Ooh, a lot of upside down cards. Here we go with the reading. Uh, you have the loyalty card. And you need to move the light. You have the loyalty card and the grove card. Now, like I've said before to people that the grove card is upside down. But for this purpose, I'm going to turn to rice it up so you can see. And actually, I'm probably going to end up going back on this deck and blacking these out too. But with this... Um, can I move this light so you can see? That works? That works. Okay, so with this, with the Grove card, if you notice you have a cat, 
And cat basically runs off intuition. Let me put this up here to get a little more light. There you go. Cat basically runs off of intuition. And you have the trees back here, which to me, trees symbolize a deeper knowledge and ancestral connection. And normally for most people, this is meditation. But because it's upside down, basically, you're, you're ignoring the messages that you're getting from the spiritual realm. And you, that's what the loyalty card here is, upside down, because if you ignore the message you get from the spiritual realm and the message you get from your ancestors, then you're ignoring your loyalty to yourself because they're there to help you. And once again, when you do this, this is going to mess with your self-worth, who you think you are, who you thought you were becoming, the person you thought you was, the person you think you are, the person you want to become. It starts to mess with it. So then we have a reminder card, but this um, this has the reminder card and it says don't, don't, um, don't forget but because it's upside down there's some things that you need to forget there's some things that you need to let go and then this card up is right set up which means it's fragmented fragments which means there's a lot of things that fragment that's coming together now that should not be together and i'm basing this off the rest of the cards there's a lot of things that are coming together that should not be together because you should have already let that stuff go and let out your life you're attaching stuff that from other things onto these new things or other past experiences onto these new stuff with a bunch of what ifs or well this looks like this based on how this made me feel based on what this did not exactly what it made you feel but because this person did this the same as somebody else did in the past you're basing it on that and you're putting together fragments of stuff that don't belong together so it's time to really deep analyze it's time to be clear cut and let stuff go let people go <coughs> excuse me and um, be clear cut and dry you know there's a time when there's a time where, what's the best way to say it? What people see as good and evil really is not good and evil. If you go towards the Bible, in the beginning, God made everything and he said it was good. He, that included the devil in that. So that means everything had its purpose. So even in that, you know, out of the dark comes the light or... You know, after every night, there's a day, but you have to go through that night to get to the day. You have to go through the storm to get to the rainbow. So there's this this weekend is a time where you're going to have to be clear, cut, and dry. This weekend is a time where you can't judge things based off of your idea of good and evil, but you have to judge things based off the spiritual understanding and ancestral wisdom of what needs to be done and how it needs to be done, regardless of how you feel and regardless of how somebody else feels, as long as you're not physically harming nobody or being abusive. But regardless of how you, uh, how you feel, if for the greater purpose, it's going to serve a greater purpose. So you may have that friend where, you know, y'all have fun, y'all party all the time. But any other time, but you know it's toxic. It's always trouble every time you go out. It may be fun and entertaining, but it's always trouble. That person needs to go. It may be old habits that you know, you know, it may not be a bad habit. But it could, I can't really think right now, but it could be just a habit that you have um, that's not long longer serving you. You know, it may not necessarily be a bad habit. It may be... Um, TV shows and books that you truly love or that style or genre of books and TV shows that you love but it's holding you back now because it's keeping you in a certain mindset that you no longer need no longer serve uh, it could be friends who've done nothing wrong they're beautiful friends but now it's being a, a divider line a separation where you need to back off of them just a little bit until your new spirit can be groomed and, and groomed and um grow and then you maybe can go back to them and spend a little more time with them because they're keeping you in, in your old mindset based off of their comfort zone. That doesn't mean it's bad because, again, that's their life. But this is also your life, too. So this is a weekend more so where it's a very balancing weekend. It's time for just play, straight common sense. It's time to just straight cut and dry decisions. No more um, playing around with it. No more second guessing. No more playing out scenarios in your head to see which one is the best one. Now so we can just do and everybody's not going to like what you do, but you need to do it for you. As long as you're not hurting nobody. Um, you know, as long as you're not hurting nobody, you're not hurting yourself. And when I mean hurting nobody or abusing anybody, you know, if people feelings are going to get hurt. When someone says, hey, come on, hang out with me, you go, no, I'm not doing it no more. Or I need to back off of you for this. Or you, you go into another direction. You know, people are always going to find a way to make it about them. That's just our nature. Just like in our life, we make it about us because it's our life. So that's just human nature. So you can't really worry too much about their feelings right now. Just pay attention to how you say it to them. So with that, that is your weekend reading for this weekend. Everybody stay blessed and peace.